very good morning students and once again i welcome you all for the digital classroom of science dear students i hope you all are enjoying the live online sessions we had it on last friday and again on this friday we are going to have one to one uh, conversation in that online session so students in the last science lecture we had finished with lesson number 6 composition of matter and today we are going to start with a new lesson lesson number 7 metals and non metals so let's start with the lesson we had studied that all the elements are divided into three groups metals non metals and metalloids right metals we know there are different types of metals like gold silver iron copper aluminum magnesium sodium calcium platinum etc these are all metals now in this lesson we are going to study about the physical properties and chemical properties of the metals as well as the non metals physical properties means the properties which we can see through the appearance of the substance and chemical properties means when they come in contact with other substance how do they react on the basis of their chemical composition so the different properties of the elements are luster that is the shine then what is the state whether they are solid liquid or gas whether they can be given some shape right or they are good or bad conductors of heat and electricity that is the heat can transmit from one point to another similarly whether electricity can pass from one point of the element to other or they can lose the electrons or they can gain the electrons these are the different properties which we are going to study in detail about the metals and non metals so first let's start with the physical properties of metals very first property we have to study is the physical state physical state means at room temperature under ordinary temperature whether the metals are in solid state liquid state or gaseous state now most of the metals at room temperature are in solid state but you know that exceptions are everywhere so mercury and gallium these are the two metals which are liquids at room temperature mercury you know uh, if you had gone to the doctor uh, the stethoscope which they used to measure the blood pressure or a thermometer you might have used you might have seen in your house so the liquid which is present in that thermometer the shiny silvery color liquid that is the mercury and that is also a metal so that is an exception so mercury and gallium are the liquids which are found in liquid state second is luster luster means shine that is if light falls on the surface of the metal whether it reflects or not so generally metals almost all the metals they are having a luster they are called as lustrous metals and if light falls on their surface it is reflected third is hardness now as i said that most of the metals are in solid state and you know that solids are very hard but again here the exceptions are there like sodium and potassium they are so soft that they can be cut with the help of a knife like we cut vegetables and fruits similarly the sodium and uh phosphorus can also be cut into uh different shapes fourth is ductility ductility means whether the metal can be molded into a wire whether a wire can be made from the metal or not so we had seen that the electric wires outside the rubber coating is there but inside the copper wire is there which flows electricity from one place to another then we had seen hangers on which we 
put the clothes they are made up of aluminium so all these are metals and they can be molded into wire so this property is called as ductility and all the metals are ductile next property is malleability malleability means whether they can be hammered into thin sheets right now iron uh, articles you might have seen aluminium articles you might have seen silver gold right so all these can be hammered into thin sheets thus all the metals are malleable and the property is called as malleability next is conduction of heat all the metals are good conductors of heat in our previous class if you remember we had uh, seen the experiment in the lab that if we take a iron rod aluminium rod and copper rod and if we place drops of wax on it and the other end of the uh, wire strip we uh, um, hot we make it hot with the help of a uh, fire then the wax which is present at the other end of the strip metal strip it starts melting that means the heat is conducting from one place to another and out of all the metals aluminium uh, silver and copper ag is silver these three are the best conductors of heat seventh point is conduction of electricity whether they are, can conduct electricity from one place to another just now i gave you the example of electric wires inside which the copper wires are present so they are very good conductors of electricity but again here the exception is lead which is neither a conductor of heat nor electricity it is a non conductor of heat and electricity next is density now as i told you in the very first point that most of the metals are in solid state and we know that solids they have the higher density compared to the liquids and gases so as all the metals most of the metals are solid they have a very high density again exceptions are there like sodium and potassium they have a very low density lower than water that means they can sink in water next is melting and boiling point again the simple thing liquids gases they can be heated very fast they can be melted okay, very fast solids right now as all the metals are solid so they will need a very high temperature for melting and similarly for boiling also they need a very high temperature so the metals they have a very high melting and boiling point again the exceptions are there like mercury which is a liquid gallium which is a liquid sodium and potassium they are having a low melting and boiling point last point is sonority you might have seen the bell which is hanging outside sangeeta teacher's office and after every period when the electricity is not there we have electric bell also in the school and the metal bell also which is struck manually so that bell when it is hit on the surface it makes a sound this property is called as sonority and the metals are called as sonorous so these are the different properties of the metals then now we will start with the non metals non metals examples are carbon sulfur phosphorus and their properties also we are going to study mostly these uh, non metals are brittle and non lustrous brittle means when they fall on the ground they break into pieces and non lustrous means they don't have a shine so we will start with the physical properties of non metals now let's start with the physical properties now generally the properties physical properties are just opposite of the properties of metals so we'll start with the first one that is the physical state 
non metals are found in all the three states that is solid like carbon sulfur and phosphorus liquids like bromine and gases like hydrogen and nitrogen so they are present in all the three states second one is luster shine now non metals they do not have any shine now again exceptions are there you might have seen diamonds right diamond is a non metal and it has a very sharp shine so this is an exception similarly iodine iodine crystals when we'll go to the lab once the school reopens and you are in the school i'll show you that iodine crystals are also very shiny and some are colorful some metal non metals are colorless like carbon is black sulfur is yellow and bromine is brown then third one is brittleness as i told you that they are soft like sodium and phosphorus can be cut by a knife or if they fall on the ground they break into smaller pieces and the non metal diamond is the hardest metal non metal present on the earth hardest uh, you can say substance present on the earth next is ductility and malleability now some are liquid and some are gases also some are brittle so they neither have the property of ductility nor malleability that means non metals are neither ductile nor they are malleable next conduction of heat and electricity they are bad conductors of heat as well as electricity but again the exception is there that is graphite graphite is a very good conductor of electricity next is density as i said some are liquid some are gases so they have lower density compared to the metals melting point and boiling point again the same thing because they are liquid and gases mostly and thus they have a low melting point and boiling point compared to the metals metals were mostly solid and solids they need a very high temperature for melting as well as boiling but non metals they are mostly in liquid state or gaseous state and thus they have a very low melting and boiling point again exceptions are there carbon has a very high melting and boiling point similarly it also uh, boron boron is also another non metal which is having low melting and boiling point now we have to start with the third group of elements that is metalloids we had already studied the physical uh, properties of metals and non metals the third ones are metalloids now actually metalloids are the intermediate between the metals and non metals so they are having the properties of metals as well as non metals and the examples are arsenic silicon and germanium then we will start with the chemical properties of metals as i said that chemical properties are based on the chemical composition of the metals or com chemical composition of the elements now we had studied in the previous lesson about the electronic configuration atomic number atomic mass number etc right if you remember atomic number is equal to number of protons or number of electrons right now the electrons which are present in a metal if they are uh, distributed in their different paths or the orbits which you remember are k l m n right and there is a formula 2n square on the basis of which the electrons are distributed and they can be accommodated in the different orbits so they can be accommodated as 2 8 8 8 right like this on the basis of the number of orbit so in metals the electronic configuration if we see most of the metals they have three electrons in outermost shell three electrons or 
less than three electrons in their outermost shell. This is called as electronic configuration. Now here you can see I have shown you the table. We have sodium metal, magnesium metal and aluminium metal. Now sodium is having 11 atomic number. That means the electrons are 11. So when we will distribute it comes to 2, 8, 1. 1 electron. Magnesium atomic number 12. Number of electrons 12. So when they will be distributed it comes to 2, 8, 2. 2 electrons. Aluminium 13. 13 electrons when they are distributed it comes to 2, 8, 3. So this way the metals are having 3 or less than 3 electrons in their outermost orbit. Next is formation of ions. We had also studied that atoms they do not have any charge because they have equal number of protons and electrons. But when Either they donate the electrons or they gain the electrons. They form the ions which are either positive or negative. Right? And this is how the ions are formed. Now as these metals are having 3 or less than 3 electrons in the outermost orbit. So it becomes easy for them to lose the electrons or the valency electrons to form cations or the positive ions ions. Now we had also studied about the valency electrons. The electrons present in the outermost orbit are called as valency electrons. So these electrons when they are lost, when they are donated by the atom of any metal, they form cations or the positively charged ions. Like sodium 281 when it will give away this one electron it will gain one positive charge. Sodium will give away two and it will gain two positive charge. Why it is gaining two positive charge? Because we know that in atom there are equal number of protons and electrons. Right? So there were 12 electrons and 12 protons. But now it has donated two electrons. So how many electrons it is having now? 10. But protons? 12. So two Positive charges are extra. Similarly, aluminium, it can give away 3 electrons and it will form aluminium plus 3 cation. Next chemical property is reaction with oxygen. Now, when these metals, they come in contact with oxygen, they form oxides which are called as metal oxide. And these metal oxides are basic in nature right they have a basic in nature so when these metal oxides they react with the acid they form salt and water so this is all about the chemical properties of metals right then fourth one is reaction with acid now what happens when these metals they react with the acid now, when they react with the dilute acid, you know that acids are of two types, dilute and concentrate, right? So, if they react with the dilute acid, they form salt and hydrogen gases liberated. So, this is with the metals. Whenever they come in contact with the dilute acid, they form salt and the hydrogen gases liberated. Next is reaction with water. Now what happens when they come in contact with water? Now when they come in contact with water, generally the reaction is not very observable. Most metals, they do not show any observable and fast reaction with cold water. But some metals like uh, sodium and potassium, they react with cold water and they form hydroxides and the hydrogen gas. Again, this is an exception, right? But because generally they do not react, but sodium and phosphorus, they react with the water and they form hydroxides and hydrogen gas. Similarly, magnesium also reacts with water, but only when water is heated and converted into steam, right? 
that is at a very high temperature magnesium reacts with the water then the chemical properties of non metals all whatever we had studied till now that those were the properties of metals now we will start with the chemical properties of non metals now here also uh, generally all these chemical properties will be just opposite of the chemical properties of the metals now very first one is electronic configuration now in metals it was 3 or less than 3 electrons in the valency shell whereas in non metals the electrons in the outermost shell is 4 or less than 8 because if 8 is there then it will become stable and it will not react so non metals they have between 4 and 7 electrons in the valency shells examples i had shown you nitrogen 7 2 and 5 oxygen 8 2 and 6 chlorine 17 2 8 and 7 so valency shell has 7 electrons in the outermost shell then formation of ions now metals they form the positive ions whereas non metals they form the negative charge ions which are also called as anions now they are having 4 to 7 electrons so they need more electrons to make the outermost orbit stable so they gain the electrons and when they are gaining the electrons that means the number the balance between the protons and the electrons is disturbed so whatever number of electrons they are accepting they are gaining that will be the charge on the ion chlorine is having seven electrons in the outermost orbit so it takes one and it forms 288 one negative chloride ion oxygen needs two electrons so it gets oxygen minus two charge when it converts into an ion similarly nitrogen has five so it needs three more and it gets a minus three charge and turns into an ion then next is reaction with water now non metals also when they react with the oxygen when they come in contact with the oxygen they form non metal oxide just like the metals metals also form the metal oxide similarly non metals they form the non metal oxides but the non metal oxides are acidic in nature whereas metal oxides are basic in nature so this is the difference between the metal and non metal oxides non metal oxides are acidic in nature like carbon when reacts with oxygen forms carbon dioxide which is acidic in nature carbon dioxide again reacts with if sodium hydroxide it forms na2co3 that is sodium carbonate and water right so when the oxides of non metals they react with water they form an acid right so carbon dioxide when reacts with water it forms carbonic acid h2co3 when with sulfur dioxide it forms sulfurous acid h2so3 and h2so4 it forms with the help of sulfur trioxide okay sulfur dioxide is having two oxygen atoms sulfur trioxide is having three oxygen atoms and thus it forms sulfurous acid and sulfuric acid respectively non metals they do not react with dilute acids whereas we had studied that metals they react with the dilute acids and they give away hydrogen gas and form the salts okay so this is all about the chemical properties of non metals next we are going to start with the noble metals noble metals generally they do not react with other elements and the examples are gold silver platinum palladium rhodium these are all the noble metals and they occur in the nature in the elemental state now these metals are used 
very widely like gold and silver platinum you know that they are used in the making of jewelry they are used in the ornaments they are also used in medicines okay silver and gold it is commonly used in the ayurvedic medicine swarna bhasma or abhrak bhasma the chandi bhasma you might have heard if you have little knowledge of ayurvedic medicines then gold and silver are used for making the medals for the different competitions whether it is olympiad or whatever so gold and silver are also used for making the medals then these gold and silver these two noble metals they are used for few electronic devices also some electronic devices in which the gold and silver are used and the platinum and palladium these are the two noble metals which are used as catalyst now we had already studied about catalyst that catalyst is a substance which is used to speed up a chemical reaction but it does not participate in the chemical reaction so this is all about the noble metals then purity of gold if you had ever gone to the jeweler's shop you might have heard about carat that is this gold is 24 carat this is 18 carat this is 14 carat now what does it mean carat is the purity of the gold the purest form of gold is called as 24 carat gold that means it does not have any other metal present in it it does not have any impurity it is 100% pure but it is very soft so it cannot be used for making the ornaments so it is added with either copper or silver and generally the ornaments are made from 24 karat gold where the gold is 91.66% in uh, 10 grams and the remaining is either copper or silver similarly 18 karat has 75% 14 karat 58.33 12 karat 50 and 10 karat 41.66 then the last topic of the lesson is corrosion what is corrosion what do you see in this pictures you might have observed at home also that if any iron article is left open and when it comes in contact with oxygen and water it starts rusting right now iron when comes in contact with oxygen it forms iron oxide and iron oxide is nothing but the rusting of the iron no a reddish color deposit is formed on iron when it comes in contact with the oxygen gas similarly if you have copper vessels at home you might have seen that with the uh, as the time passes the copper turns having a greenish layer on it even silver it starts having a blackish layer around it all this is nothing but the corrosion it is called as corrosion the process is called as corrosion so we say that these are corrosive elements right then the next is alloy now what is an alloy we had studied about the heterogeneous mixture and homogeneous mixture suspension in the previous lesson if you remember so alloy is a homogeneous mixture of two or more metals or metal and a non metal so either the constituents of an alloy can be two metals or it can be one metal and one non metal and its very important feature is that it does not rust so the examples are stainless steel it is a mixture of carbon chromium and nickel similarly there is another alloy which is bronze and it is a mixture of copper and tin right these alloys they do not get rusted so alloy is a homogeneous mixture of either two metals or a metal and a non metal 
so students with this we finish with lesson number 7 and in the next uh, science period we are going to start with the workbook exercise of lesson number 7 so please be prepared when your next science period is there please try to find out the answers all the answers are given in the workbook so till then stay home stay safe and please take care of your family members and yourself too thank you